Well, hello there. What's up, dudes? Welcome back to Atlas. Now, I've decided I want to just go ahead and keep it very relaxed with this channel and take a little bit of a different approach than what I've been traditionally doing. And I just would like to try and have some casual fun, talk about different topics and things. So this is actually going to be the first of this kind of series. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you do, feel free to let me know down in the comments down below. And I'm also curious to get your guys' thoughts and feedback on all this other stuff that I'm going to be talking about as well. So this is actually going to be focusing on my personal top 10 favorite animes that I've watched over the years and what I've experienced. If you guys didn't know, I'm actually a creator of manga myself. I'm a creator of a series called Revival. I've got four issues done as of the time of this video. The next issue is getting ready to be made. I'm working in association with a uh, art studio that's based out of Brazil, and I would love if you guys go check that stuff out. So Revival, it's a shonen style uh, anime. That's actually my favorite type of anime, personally. I grew up watching DBZ, so that's number one on my list, is Dragon Ball Z. Specifically, Dragon Ball Z. There's Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, Dragon Ball Super. I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z. Which was interesting, you know, back then when I was a kid, we had, um, we used cable. Um, well, it was, it was satellite TV. We didn't have a lot of channels to be able to work with. Uh, well, actually, no, later on we did end up, we started off with cable, barely had anything. And then when I was about 11 years old, it transitioned, ended up getting a lot more channels and uh, came across Dragon Ball Z. So Dragon Ball, which obviously timeline-wise leads before Dragon Ball Z. I didn't end up watching until years afterwards. So I started when Raditz landed on planet Earth, Goku went up against him, fought all the way to the end of the Cell Saga, uh, and then into the Majin Buu Saga. So that was a huge blast for me. My personal favorite character out of all anime characters would be Gohan, especially Teen Gohan, obviously with Dragon Ball Super, if you guys have been following that. It's been this era where Gohan has been known to pull back from being really aggressive in his fighting, and his training. It's been very much about his studies, family life, peaceful, not wanting to do anything. That's in his nature. And now we're starting to see in Dragon Ball Super that he's becoming a bit more serious and wanting to go back and train and be able to do things in his own way. So I'm excited to see what kind of stuff it is that he can be able to pull out with that. Uh, another really popular show that I grew up and I loved was Naruto. And specifically with that one would be the Naruto Shippuden. Seeing Naruto grow up around the same age is what I did. Because um, I started watching the show when I was about 12. So that would have been in 2002. And then by the time that the whole series had finished... I got to see Naruto come to fruition and earn that title that he'd been working so hard towards, the, the Hokage. And I was extremely happy for him. I remember specifically for that, that I watched the English version of the show first. Then, off of TV, when I got access to the internet, I started reading the English... Uh, sorry, I started watching the Japanese episodes because they were further along and they had the english subtitles so i watched through all of those and then by the time i got all the way caught up to the modern time with those i couldn't wait for the next issue so i decided to read the issue online and i would find the english transcriptions and i would be reading through all those getting all the way caught up so basically i would watch the anime when i could on the japanese version Although I grew up watching and listening to the English voices. So I still love the English voices, personally. That's what I was exposed to first. The Japanese still, I think, did an absolutely amazing job. And reading it gave me a taste of experiencing everything before it came out. And I remember, specifically for this show, that when it was nearing the end, I was caught off guard. Because I believe it was every Wednesday I would wake up, and the first thing in the morning is I would go and read the new issue of Naruto Shippuden. Well, I was told that there was going to be a couple more issues left, and then I was told that there was going to be like two more issues left. And I woke up, and lo and behold, they released the last two issues at the same time. So there was no next week. There was only, this is what you've got right now, that's it. And when I, I, 
as I was reading the whole thing, I got a sense of being nervous because I've chronicled with the show for so long. It's almost scary to see part of that end. Uh, and when I read the last pages, I personally, I started to cry because I just got to know him for so long. And that, like, again, being close in the age and everything progressing through it, it was really something that it hit me hard here. Uh, another show I really liked, like, is My Hero Academia. This is a more modern show that's taking place right now, or at least, you know, at the time of this video. But just the whole concept, he's kind of like a Captain America for All Might and everything, and Deku, his whole personality, the way he looks, you know, striving, being, looking up so much to All Might, and just one for all, everything, the power, you know, it's, it's the music is incredible. One of their theme songs is literally my all-time favorite anime song. I hear that song, and when the jazz comes in with the saxophone, it's, oh god, it's just such an amazing flow. Fights, super fast-paced, cool character backgrounds, relationships being set up between them, uh, the stylized expressions on all the characters, the color formatting, everything that's chosen from that. Absolutely love it. So next on the list is going to be Yu Yu Hakusho, another show that I grew up with. A lot of these, you can tell, are things that I grew up with as part of my childhood, and I don't know if you guys are going to be feeling the same way if you're watching this or anime lovers. If you're like, most of the shows that I identify are from when I was a kid, whereas you may still watch new shows that come out today, but they just don't resonate with you as well as when you were a kid. So some of that, I think, is going to be more biased just on the fact that it was your first experiences of being exposed to these kind of things but you know to each their own so with Yu Yu Hakusho the spirit gun I thought was a really cool move being able to charge that up the fact that he had a limitation on how much he could use that was also a really cool concept and the fact that he could strengthen himself over time to be able to release it uh, and fire it was absolutely amazing and then including later on in the I think they called it the underworld uh where he like be basically became the demon king and that whole look of transformation uh, the uh, darn what, what was his name there was a guy it was really huge muscles with the sunglasses on that he had to go fight against and then he had his brother that could like manipulate himself and change his whole body that duo combination was a really unique experience as well uh, and then the guy's voice the, with the red hair so uh, um, I just I'm spacing out the man. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I forgot his name. He's got the red hair. It's like a pompadour. I don't know if that's a, what it's called. It's not a fedora. Fedora is a hat. Darn, I forgot his name. Anyways, so that guy, his voice in the English translation, the really like gravelly kind of little sounding voice. I love that voice. One of my all-time favorite uh, anime voiceover character roles that I felt fit into it really, really well. So the next show I'm going to talk about is Death Note. Death Note, not necessarily a ton of action, but the story plot was so well developed. And the fact that the entire show had a very dark context to it, and they were able to reflect that very well in its art style, I thought was a beautiful, flowing combination all put together. I, I would be scared if I had an anime... A death anime book. That noise you might be hearing in the background is my cat. I don't know what he's doing. He's got energy right now. So it, to have a real death note in real life, I'd be so scared to try and touch something like that and to potentially kill people. But like the anime adaptation that I saw over on Netflix, that was okay. The CGI I thought was really cool. Like when they did Ryu in that, it looked amazing to me. The storyline plot and everything was kind of, eh, I didn't think it gave it quite enough justice. So that kind of leads into the next thing, which is Bleach. So again, I really liked it growing up. The ad the adaptation that they did on Netflix was like, eh. The CGI on that one wasn't even quite that great on it. But it's cool seeing them trying to make attempts with these things at the very least. But the way that they're trying to progressively pursue these storylines and then just make it a little bit unique on its own end. Um, 
doesn't seem like they're effectively doing it that well in my personal opinion but the hollow mask anyways let's get back to the actual anime itself the hollow mask being able to put that on what well, manifests itself and it's transitioning your body into more of a, a dark natured state and then he has to overcome this internally and there's been different stages where he's been ha having to go and pursue doing this was an amazing way to be able to help evolve the character in his design and also to have a new form of a transformation. So I, I know in Inuyasha, he had like his internal demons that he also had to try and overcome. With this, is a little bit more of a physical, like almost like a bone element that came out of his face. And it, it had its own distinct look with masks and stuff. And I do like masks. I do collect different kinds of masks. You know, I got like some Naruto things, Obito, Obito and stuff. Uh, so, uh, next one I'm gonna go into is gonna be Baki the Grappler. They have released new style episodes on Netflix, which I have enjoyed for the most part. There's some stylizing that's going in it with, uh, it's almost like it's almost overly dramatized, I believe is how you say that, with what they're saying and how they express themselves to each other, and when it gets, like, really sappy emotional. When I see those moments... I'm like, eh, I don't really care for that. The fight scenes are super cool. The story concept is really cool. The original Baki that came out years ago, that's what I grew up with, and that's what I really love. The art style, I think, is better for today's stuff, but the way that they demonstrated the characters and the fights and everything else from back then, I thought was much nicer than compared to today. Uh, now, the next one is going to be Yu-Gi-Oh!, now, I do want to say that for Yu-Gi-Oh, some people may consider it a cartoon. I don't know why. I mean, I think it looks very much anime. Uh, but I played the cards growing up. I collected the cards, Exodia. I even did a couple of little tournament type things. I only ever beat one player. I lived in the middle of the forest. So when I went to go do the tournaments a couple times, we had to drive about two hours to get to the city to be able to actually participate in the competition. But I drew Exodia. I read a magazine, figured out how to make up my deck, and I've set it all up, laid out all the cards. The guy was, like, sitting there super upset, just waiting for me to draw every single card and lay it out. I had to put the main body in the center, the arms on the sides, and the legs on the very end, and just be like, Exodia, obliterate. And I, you know, I'm like 12, 14-year-old kid or something. It's so stupid. But the original anime was great. Then the later seasons started going weird. And then I got to say, when it got to the point, I don't remember which one it was, um, but they're riding around on the motorcycles playing cards. Like, one, that's a really bad image to portray to kids. And two, this is a stupid concept. And what the hell happened to the show? Like, how does the game even play? So I, I've been noticing that they're transitioning a lot more to the original card game set for uh, what they're putting out for the video games and things. Since I think they understand that they kind of went too far off with too many different sets of rules and things. So I really like the fact that they're starting to get back to their core. And a lot of audience members, I could tell, are very happy that they're getting back to their core. Trigoon is the next one. With Vash the Sampede, his entire character model, his sunglasses were very iconic, and his hairstyle and red jacket. The fact that he had that super crazy arm that I learned about later on while watching the show, and how... All these people could view him as being this evil guy when he has such a gentle heart. It's a really interesting twist. You know, the entire time we're exposed to him, we feel that this is a genuinely good guy. and Because he is a genuinely good guy. But he had an instance in his life that a negative impact that affected everybody. And that's what they latch on to. And he's trying to make this journey to basically overcome that and to be able to redeem himself and help out humanity and I just thought that was an incredible show that was too short-lived. I would have loved to have seen more of the show. I think they ended it well, but it is a show that it'd be cool to see a lot more stuff revolving around it. Maybe if it was in between, not necessarily the way that it ended, but if there was more stuff that took place from the beginning to the end, um, putting it inside there. Uh, now, the next one I want to say is going to be uh, Hunter Hunter. So with Hunter Hunter or Hunter x Hunter... Uh, I like the 2011 version. The graphics are a little bit better, and it also 
admires and adheres more to the actual creator's manga itself. So the whole time that takes place, uh, we see from the original version that it follows the same up to a point. And I was a little confused at first when I saw this because I was under the impression that it was the same show. And I was like, maybe they just made it digitally better. But it got to a certain episode where the storyline then transitioned. I was like, oh, and then I found out that it was remade to be able to go to what the creator had originally intended. And with the ending, with the chessboard, that creature, how smart he was, the love connection that took place uh, between the two individuals, when you have somebody that, again, like is, is viewed as super evil, but then they take the other element that's the good side and they force that out. It's a great context that I think a lot of these animes are really being able to pull off of is making you think they're totally bad and then revealing the good sides to them or they're totally good and then revealing the bad sides to them to just kind of identify that people are not perfect and we all make mistakes regardless who we are. And yeah, so those are my top 10 favorite animes just for an extra measure. I'll go ahead and throw in Hajime no Ippo. I think that's a really cool boxing series and the fact that they added an addition to it years later. I think they may have done it twice. If I remember correctly, I believe they did two separate times. But um, that character's concept is really cool. Uh, the way they did all the fights and everything. I know it's not a lot of details for it, but you just you got to go check it out for yourself. So I got those 10 for you guys. DBZ, Naruto Shippuden, My Hero Academia. We got Yu Yu Hakusho, Death Note, Bleach, Baki the Grappler, Yu-Gi-Oh! Trigun, and Hunter x Hunter and Hajime no Ippo as an extra 11th one thrown in for you guys. Please let me know in the comments down below what your favorite anime is, what your top three favorite anime are, or your top 10. It's okay. You can put your top 10 down if you want to as well. If you like this video and you want me to talk about maybe one of these anime a little bit more and uh, my thoughts more in depth about it or a specific favorite episode that I had of these shows, or if you want me to talk about something else, it could be literally about anything, guys. But I just want to take this as an opportunity to be able to share a little bit more about who I am, to learn a little bit more about who you guys are, and just have, have fun, hang out and do this, not necessarily make it about tutorials on games and trying to be in search algorithms and stuff like that. I do live stream a lot. If you guys want to come and check out my live streams, there should be a link in the description down below here. If you hit subscribe and turn the bell notification on when I'm live streaming on YouTube side, Hopefully you see that I'm over here as well. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed. Feel free to subscribe. Feel free to drop a like. And I will see you guys later. Oh yeah, baby.